Hello and welcome to lesson 24 of additional maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're focusing on binomial expansion and it's the second lesson on this topic. Make sure you've watched lesson 23 on binomial expansion because we will be using the skills we've learned in that lesson for this lesson. Okay, today we're going to be taking our knowledge a little bit further and doing more complicated binomial expansions, but we will be just looking for a single part of the expansion, not the full expansion. So for example, last lesson we learned how to expand a binomial here, a plus b, to the power of four, and we could do it either through using Pascal's triangle or using the choose function on our calculator to get the coefficients one, four, six, four, one. Today what we're going to be focusing on though is finding a specific term. So if I asked can you find the term in this expansion that has a squared in it? Then all you would need to write down is 6a squared b squared. That is the term in this expansion with an a squared in. Okay, so we are looking to find specific terms rather than whole expansions. So let's look at our first example. In this first example, we want to find the x cubed term in the expansion of 5 minus 2x to the power of 7. Now, in the last lesson, I didn't give any examples with negatives, with terms which were negative inside the bracket. Okay? Terms with negatives inside the bracket, you need to be very careful. The way I would think about this is I would think about this as 5 minus 2, 5 plus minus 2x to the power of 7. So you, you don't just have 5 take away 2x to the power of 7, you've got 5 and you've got minus 2x in the bracket. So the two things we are going to be choosing from when we expand the 7 brackets are 5 and minus 2x. So when I think of expanding this bracket to the power of 7, so 7 of these brackets in a row, and I need to multiply one thing from each bracket by one thing from the next bracket, etc. So that seven terms are multiplied together. I think of either choosing the five or I'm choosing negative two x. Okay, a lot of A level students forget about the negative and just choose the five and choose the two x. Okay, so make sure you include the negative in there. Okay, so I want the x cubed term in this expansion. In order to get an x cubed, I need to think, how many times do I need to choose this minus 2x? I can choose it up to seven times. I can choose it no times, once, twice, three times, etc., all the way up to seven times from the seven brackets. When you multiply those seven terms together, I want to get an x cubed, and therefore I need to choose the minus 2x three times. So from the seven brackets, I need to choose this term here three times. If I've chosen the minus 2x three times, then that means that I'll choose the 5 four times. Because I am choosing one term from each of the seven brackets, so I need to choose seven things in a row. So I can do that by doing 5 multiplied by 5, multiplied by 5, multiplied by 5, multiplied by negative 2x multiplied by negative 2x multiplied by negative 2x. And then you've got to think, how many ways can I do that calculation? Because I could have chosen those first five, the, those fives, the four fives that I'm going to choose from the first four brackets and the negative 2x from the next three brackets. But there are many other ways of choosing that. You learned in the last lesson that the number of combinations of ways this can happen is from seven brackets, choose three things. Which is the same as from seven brackets, choose four. Seven, choose three, and seven, choose four are equal. Check yourself on your calculator if you want. They are both 35. So there are 35 different possible ways in which I can choose the 5 four times and the negative 2x three times. So the calculation that I do to find the x cubed term, so the x cubed term is given by the calculation 
7 choose 3 multiplied by 5 to the power of 4 multiplied by negative 2x to the power of 3. And that's equal to 35 multiplied by 625 multiplied by, now think carefully, when I put negative 2x to a, an odd power, the answer will be negative. Because if it was to an even power, the negatives would pair up and cancel out. But here, there will be one left over. And so the answer from that will be negative 8x cubed. And then I combine all three parts of that together and I get negative 175,000 x cubed. So my term with x cubed in is negative 175,000 x cubed. If the question asked, what is the coefficient of x cubed in this expansion, then your answer would just be minus 175,000. That is the coefficient, the thing that is in front of x cubed. But here I wanted to find the entire x cubed term, and so I write that entire thing. So that's how to find a single specific term in an expansion. See if you can have a go at this question. Find the x to the power of 4 term in the expansion of 2 minus 3x to the power of 9. Pause the video, have a go, and I'll go through the answer. So, for the x to the power of 4 term, you need to choose the negative 3x 4 times, and therefore the 2 5 times, because there are 9 brackets in a row. So the x to the power of 4 term comes from doing from 9 brackets, choose 4, multiplied by 2 to the power of 5, multiplied by negative 3x, to the power of 4. By the way, 9 choose 5 would have worked fine as well because 9 choose 5 means you're focusing on the 2s. How many ways can you choose two thing, the, the 2 um, from 5 out of the 9 brackets? So this is equal to 126 multiplied by 32 multiplied by, and the negatives here will cancel out, so it's positive 81x to the power of 4. And so your answer is positive 326,592x to the power of 4. So that there is the x to the power of 4 term in that expansion. Well done if you got that right. Okay, let's have a look at a slightly more difficult question. One which confuses a-level students, but I'm sure won't confuse you. Find the term independent of x in the expansion of 4x plus 2 over x to the power of 6. Okay, so let's break that down. Let's think about what the, that means. The term independent of x. So when I do an expansion, usually if I'm, if I'm expanding some x's and numbers to, to different powers, I'm going to get different powers of x. If I had a quadratic, let's say I had an x squared plus 6x plus 5 as the result of an expansion, which of those three terms is the term independent of x? Well, the 5 is independent of x. It is not affected by x. If I substitute x into this expression, only the 5 stays as 5. The others will depend on what x is. So when it says find the term independent of x, it's asking for the constant term in the expansion, the term which has x to the power of zero or no x attached to it. Now, you might think, well, how am I going to get that from this expansion? Because both terms have x's, so I'm going to choose x a certain number of times. How, how, how would I get just a constant from this expansion? Well, the key is that the right term is 2 divided by x. Another way of writing that would be 4x plus 2x to the minus 1 to the power of 6. When we multiply x to a positive power by x to a negative power, when we multiply powers of x, then 
using the law of indices, we would add the indices. And what we're looking for is to end up with x to the power of zero. So I want to choose the 4x a certain number of times and then x to the power of minus 1, the 2x to the minus 1 a certain number of times, so that when I then multiply them together, the x's will cancel out. So think about how you might do that. Because this one is x to the 1 and this is x to the minus 1, I'm going to need an equal number of them. So I'm going to need to choose this the same number of times as I choose this because then they will cancel each other out. There will be the same positive power of x as negative power of x, and together, when you multiply them, you'll get x to the power of zero. So because I've got six brackets to choose from, I need to choose three of each of those two terms. So I need to find the constant term. I need to do from six brackets, choose three, times 4x to the power of 3 times 2 over x to the power of 3. And that then simplifies to 20. 6 choose 3 is 20. There are 20 ways of choosing three things from six brackets. Times 64x cubed times 8 over x cubed or 8x to the minus 3. Either way is fine. And that then simplifies down to 10,240. On your calculator, I would just do 20 times 64 times 8, and you know the x cubed and the divide by x cubed will cancel each other out. So 10,240 will be the constant term in the expansion of this binomial. OK, have a go at this question. Find the term independent of x in the expansion of 2x plus 3 over x to the power of 10. Pause and have a go, and then I'll go through the answer. So for this, the constant term in this expansion will need us to choose the 2x and the 3 over x an equal number of times. And so because I've got 10 brackets, I'm going to choose each of them five times. So I'm going to do 10 choose 5 multiplied by 2x to the power of 5, multiplied by 3 over x to the power of 5. And that is 252, that's 10 choose 5, multiplied by 32x to the 5, multiplied by 243x to the minus 5, or 243 over x to the 5. And so on my calculator, I just need to type in 252 times 32 times 243, and that'll give me my answer because the x to the 5 divided by x to the 5 will cancel each other out. And the answer is 1,959,552. If you got that right, superb job. Okay, well done. If you understood that, then great. Now, what you should do is you should go to the textbook and have a go at question eight onwards from exercise 11.1. .1. So the first exercise in chapter 11, all on binomial expansion, look at questions eight onwards. Practice until you feel confident and fluent with your work and then leave some time and then practice again a week later, a month later, develop that fluency over time and then your long-term memory will get better and better. Okay, off you go and enjoy.